one pager. <laughs> Double sided though. Well, I'd like to start by congratulating and saying that I am humbled to be here tonight and going into the Manitoba Sport Hall of Fame with such a amazing, eclectic uh, group of athletes, people, and accomplishments. And to be here is uh, truly special. So thank you to the fellow inductees, the Manitoba Sport Hall of Fame, and Sport Manitoba, and Rick for, uh, for doing all of this. This is amazing. It, like I said, it is truly, yeah. It is truly an honor to be here tonight for being selfish. Uh, and, and people laugh uh, sometimes when I say that, not tonight, obviously. Um, <laughs> but we, the athletes, are selfish. We are playing games with our friends. Uh, we're testing our medal against the world's best to see how we can stack up in competition. Now, none of us ever started sports to save lives or, or to change the world. We played sports because they were fun, most of the time. And when they weren't, we were being developed as individuals. And that's not a bad thing, investing in yourself, being selfish at times. We have to put ourselves first if we are going to affect change in other people's lives. And we have to, and if we work at the things that we want and that we're passionate about, perhaps we can be inspirational for those who witness it. And, and maybe it's that selfish pursuit of athletic excellence that can be more. And when fun, one finds themselves on a stage like this, uh, in a position up here like this, it is confirmation that this journey, uh, it does touch others, and that it can be more, and that it really is something quite special. But the ability to be selfish, uh, now that's not a singular thing at all. To be selfish, it takes massive support. It takes others to believe in you and to give of themselves so that you can realize your dreams. And tonight I'd like to recognize those who allowed me to be selfish and to climb to the precipice of sport, albeit a peripheral sport for the slightly touched, but nonetheless, um, <laughs> my chosen sport of skeleton racing. And at the beginning of every story, it starts with our parents. And kids, if you don't know how that happens, ask your parents. And if your parents don't know you, you must be Catholic. Um, <laughs> but for me, Joan and Eldon were my base for everything. Everything that I ever wanted to do, did do, or thought about doing. And sometimes, because of their tutelage, I thought twice because I might die or be arrested. So I thank them for that. <laughs> they are my base because they believed in me so wholeheartedly in my potential and my capacity, never wavering and always encouraging, even no doubt when they had doubts themselves. The exposure that I had to multiple sports growing up in Russell, Manitoba, was my launch pad to find passion in a new world of sports once I left home. Physical literacy was my passport to possibilities, and when I discovered skeleton racing for myself in 2002, I had already been training for the sport of skeleton racing and to be a skeleton athlete for the past 20 years. I just didn't know what I was training for until I eventually found it. Now my two sisters who are here with my folks, my parents are also here, and they can tell you themselves what it's like to experience that bananas sport of skeleton racing firsthand because they tried it in Calgary. Uh, Pop, he got whiplash and found that out somewhere around Speedy Creek on the drive back to Winnipeg. Um, <laughs> And when you try the sport of skeleton racing, you really have to have on your rose-colored glasses to think that this is going to be really fun for the next eight years of my life. Uh, but I had on my Olympic-colored glasses the first time that I ever tried skeleton racing and a boatload of misplaced confidence that my parents had instilled in me. And I believed at that time wholeheartedly that anything was possible. And, and it is. It is possible. Because without skeleton racing, I wouldn't have earned the single greatest reward in my life. My best friend, <laughs> and my best friend's heart. I met my wife Darla in the start house at the Calgary track, and she was there with me through thick and thin as an athlete, as a teammate, and as a uh, partner. Through thick and thin in my entire skeleton career. And she was there on that finish dock for my final Olympic run. 
And realizing a dream in the selfish pursuit of athletic excellence is anything but singular. I was the proverbial tip of the iceberg. The dude on the crazy carpet with rails descending the frozen toilet chute at speeds over 146 kilometers per hour. <laughs> but there is a network that sprawls out from my family tree, incorporating my hometown of Russell, Manitoba, my province of Manitoba, and my nation, Canada. I rose to the top of sport on February 18th and 19th, 2010, on the shoulders of all of you. Thank you for the recognition, and thank you for the opportunity to represent you in sport. Cheers.